This is an idea that, that uh, I got from the author uh, Joseph Farrell. He proposes that astrology, and not astronomy, astrology is uh, the, rem the remnants of a degraded ancient science that knew about all these connections, all these electromagnetic uh, plasma connections between the in every object in the universe. What do you think of that idea? Does, does, that have, uh, does that carry water with you? It does carry a lot of water with me, um, especially, you know, they were in that period where uh, maybe the solar system didn't quite look the way uh, it does right now, uh, whether from a planetary or just a, a space environment perspective. So these remnants of the Micronova looking like bridges of dust glowing in space, they're going to be lasting for thousands of years, thousands of years. The kind of thing where, you know, you understand these ideas of these bridges through space that the pagans talk about, that Thor would actually take. And they could see the lightning coming through the right. dust. Yeah. Just like, just like you see it running through the dust column and ash columns coming up out of volcanoes, which I, was, I presume people in your country are more than familiar with. Well aware of, yes. Lightning is no stranger to uh, volcanic ash and dust and things like that. But um, all of these things really matter, and especially when in the time before we were propagating radio waves throughout the atmosphere. Uh, you know, I grew up in Pittsburgh, and that all started at KDKA in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, long before I was born, of course. But... Um, Ever since that time, we have been, well, since long before that, we were becoming disconnected from nature, but especially at that time, we were becoming more of an influence on the subtle signals of the earth and nature and other things like that. We're now, you know, those are now drowned out by human made signals, even though they're all imperceptible to us. Um, I don't think those things would have been so drowned out. I think that their effects on the solar system on the sun, on the earth would have been much more obvious. Um, they're still managing to pick some of those connections out uh, through, you know, complex statistical means. I just reported a paper on June 20th that basically showed that alignments of the inner planets were one of the main triggers of solar flares. Well, they've known for a long time, you know, in terms of these this ancient science that alignments are triggers of earthquakes and volcanoes. And you can you can measure time by, by some of these things. And I mean, heck, these people could predict eclipses. And and, and like I said, we, we think that that their most important stuff was just nonsense fantasy that they made up. I don't think so. I can't predict eclipses if, without going on NASA's eclipse page and taking a look at when the next eclipse is going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I will not stand for this notion that, you know, and also they talk about planets in chaos and, you know, Mars doing battle with Venus and, you know, these planets almost hitting Earth. And for the longest time, the story's just been, oh, that's just hogwash. It's just myth. And now they're coming out and saying, well, none of the planets in the system formed where they are now. Jupiter and Saturn switched places. Uh, Mercury is the survivor of a major pileup. Uh, you know, we know Venus is spinning the wrong way. There's, uh -huh. it looks like Mars has been in a fight. Uh, it's got scars all over him. They, they know for a fact Uranus and Neptune switched places at one point. Uh, I mean, we're, we're literally talking about the stories of the ancients, and all they have to do is say, "But this happened tens of million, hundreds of millions of years ago." So. Uh, even though it's literally the exact story that the ancestors claim to have witnessed, they're wrong and they're making it up. I don't buy all of these things. These yeah. people were smart. And a lot of them claim to have had, had help from people that came down from the sky as well. And I don't know why they'd make that up either. There's, there's too much that we're ignoring from the past that tells a very cohesive story. And all of it, unfortunately, allows you to sort of pigeonhole yourself from the get-go. So if you just want to look at aliens, you can look at pretty much everything and 
get some ancient alien interpretation. If you just want to think that God is not an engineer and he's actually got his hand in and toying with everything rather than setting up some grand design, you can have evidence and believe that too. If you want to believe as as I believe that you know, things were set up and, uh, you know, the way that the greatest engineer you could ever imagine would set them up to function perfectly, like like a perfect clock system, like a perfect organic clock system. Um, it's giving me all of the reason, all, all the reason in the world to believe that, too. And, you know, I I'm lucky that I can pull myself back and realize that no matter what perspective you take, you can come to a lot of these same conclusions.